Hey guys, it's Kale here with the Wannabes. Today I'm gonna to show you how to go through and resolve some of the charging issues that are fairly common on these betas. I'm running a 2018 Beta 390, and just about as long as I've had the bike, I've had issues charging the battery. Figuring out the wiring on these bikes is a little bit complex. It took me three days maybe to understand what other people figured out. So I wanna give it to you guys in a very digestible, very fifth grade level kind of a thing. Really quick refresher on basic electrical component testing. So this is a pretty standard digital multimeter. It's an older one, but it works fine. Um, this is ohms, that's a measure of resistance. Don't know much more about it than that. This is DC voltage, and this is alternating current voltage. Now you wanna set it to generally to the smallest unit of measurement that will cover the range that you're dealing with. So for example, if I was gonna measure DC voltage, I know it's a 12 volt system, I'll probably set it to 20. The exception might be if I'm measuring output off the stator. The stator's putting out 25, 30 in this case per leg, it'd be uh, alternating current, but rather than 20, I'd probably set it to 200 so that I can capture that range. Um, if I'm measuring diodes, this symbol is a diode symbol. I can set it there. I will measure the voltage drop across a diode. If I set it to ohms, I'm measuring resistance. If I have a one, that means I have infinite resistance, meaning I do not have a connection. If I have some other number, I have some kind of connection. The smaller the number, the better the connection, the stronger the connection. It doesn't tell you how much current can pass through that connection, just how, how good the connection is in terms of the connectors, etc. Um, and then obviously voltage is a measure of voltage. The first step in diagnosing any charging problem is to test the battery and the connections at the battery. With the bike off and the key turned off, test the voltage at the battery. The next step is to test the charging system at the battery to see if the bike's delivering enough current to the battery to charge the battery. To do that, start the bike, measure your voltmeter on the battery terminals, and you're gonna actually measure the current coming into the battery. In order to charge a 12 volt battery, you've got to push more than 12 volts into it. Ideally, 13 and a half to 14 and a half is a good range. The higher you go in that range, the faster the battery is going to charge, the more consistently it's going to charge. The lower in that range, it becomes more of a trickle charge and you may have problems like with the beta. If your voltage is below mid 13s, 13.5 ish, you're actually not providing enough charge to really charge the battery. The stator is basically an electrical generator that sits inside the engine and spins with the motor. It's got a series of coils. Those coils spin against a magnet. As they pass the magnet, they create current in one direction and then the other, it's alternating current. Now, that current comes in three phases, Never mind what that means, off the stator to something called the regulator rectifier. Now the rectifier takes those three phases of AC power and converts it into the 12 volts of DC power your bike actually runs on. Each of those three lines that come off of the stator carry some of that voltage. In the case of the beta, they're about 25 volts each. If they're not in the same range, there's a good chance something's gone wrong with your stator. To test this, start the bike, pull the connection off of the regulator rectifier, and measure the voltage between each of those three leads and a good ground. Good ground might be the negative pull of the battery or a good contact point on the bike. Be careful of trying to measure ground through paint on the frame of the bike as that can insulate your uh, connection and prevent you from measuring a good ground. The other thing you need to test in your stator is to see if any of those lines ground out. If there's a problem inside the stator where leads are broken or something like that or some mechanical issues gone wrong, you'll actually get a connection between the stator's hot side and ground. That's fairly easy to check by setting your voltmeter to ohms and measuring between each of those leads and a good ground on the bike. If you get ohms continuity between those leads, any three of those leads and the ground on the bike, you've got a problem. You need to either replace your stator or check your wiring. If your stator checks out okay, the next point in the charging system is gonna be your regulator rectifier. The regulator rectifier takes those three phases of AC current, combines them together into a steady 12 volts of DC current. It shouldn't put out more than about 14 and a half, maybe 14.8 volts, and it should produce at least somewhere in the mid 13s, 13.5, 13.6, somewhere in there. If it's outside of that range, you've either got a wiring problem or you've got a problem with the regulator rectifier itself. On a traditional dirt bike, the regulator rectifier feeds the battery and charges it. 
when the bike's off or when you want to start, the battery provides that initial power until the motor gets spinning, the generator gets charging, and then power comes from the generator. In a functional system, all of the running power, all of the running power comes from the generator. If you're drawing on the battery while the bike is running, you will eventually deplete the battery. You have to be putting more power into the battery while the bike's running than you're taking out of it in order for the bike to not eventually die. Now the problem that we have with these betas is sometimes the wiring looms come loose or there's some other design issues in them and you'll actually end up not charging the battery enough to provide repeated starts. So in order to improve this system, what we've had to do is tap an extra wire. So the stock wiring runs in here, runs through the diodes, back into the battery. We add a second one that runs parallel to all this stuff into the diodes. From the diodes, we run into the starter relay with an extra wire. There's already one, so we add a second. And that way you beef up the system. You also make sure you solder all of those joints that you'll find in there, the cold crimp joints inside that wiring loom. Now you do the same thing on the negative side. In the stock wiring loom, there's only one ground connection and it's way up by the steering column. I added two. One from somewhere in the middle, directly to the negative pole of the battery, and another up on the neck, grounding out to the frame. That gives you a much more complete system. The alternative, of course, is to go down to the beta dealership, figure out the part numbers for the wiring loom for the 2019.5 and up, better call it 2020, wiring loom, which they will sell. It's the efficient loom. Some dealers may not know about the part number switch. Make sure you get the right one. They've actually eliminated the diodes and eliminated the need to fix all these connections and eliminated the need to add extra wires and built the damn thing right. spliced an extra heavy duty wire between the output of the diodes and the relay where the battery gets its charging current from. So we're still respecting the, the single direction, the unidirection functionality of the diode. The other thing that we've done is we've spliced extra power wire in um, to this connection here so it doesn't have to run on this thinner wire all the way up to where the regulator rectifier feeds it. I've already added a second ground in to the feed off the rectifier. I'm gonna add a third ground into this bundle right here and ground that directly to the engine.